Hi, welcome to Troubadour's videos. Today we're going to conduct an overview of the new Asus P6T7WS Supercomputer Motherboard. The Asus P6T7WS board is destined to be the basis of an X58 supercomputing crisis pounding workstation. In order to achieve this, Asus refused to skimp on features and functionality for this new radically potent and powerful parallel computing solution. Let's have a look inside the box and see what accessories come with this colossus motherboard. The P6T7 motherboard comes with 6 SATA cables and 2 power adapters. Two SAS data cables with power adapters. A GP diagnostics card. 3-way SLI bridge, an Asus Q shield or input output shield, regular SLI bridge, Asus Q connector kit, a USB 2.0 and Firewire connection module, and finally a user guide with support DVD and case decal. In the bottom of the box we have this Uber motherboard, so let's take it out and check this board out in a little more detail. The Asus P6T7 supercomputer motherboard is designed with Nvidia's Quattro and Tesla cards in mind. Utilizing one Quattro and three Tesla cards on this particular motherboard will provide you up to four teraflops of pure CUDA parallel programming badness. The CPU supported on this motherboard are Intel Socket 1366, Core i7 and Core i7 Extreme CPUs, as well as Intel's Xeon 3500 series processors. The main heatsink on the board is a giant copper and aluminum fanless design block cooled by three heat pipes and an Asus Stack 2 cooling technology. Memory support is for 6 DDR3 modules with a max capacity of 24GB. Now the memory speeds can run up to 2000MHz or above providing you're willing to overclock your memory modules. Now if you're going to install 3 memory modules you will need to utilize the 3 blue slots first. The 6 blue connectors are for hooking up your SATA signal cables for your SATA hard disk and optical drives. If you install multiple SATA hard disk drives, you can create a RAID 0, RAID 1, 5 and 10 configuration with Intel's matrix storage technology through the inboard Intel ICH-10R RAID controller. And for all you enthusiasts, hardcore graphic renderers, video editors and data crunchers, no fear. You also have the option of utilizing the black connectors for high performance enterprise class SAS drives in both RAID 0 and RAID 1 configurations. This motherboard is armed with up to 12 USB 2.0 ports. Six of these ports are available by using the onboard module connectors and the remainder six ports are available on the rear input output panel. The red hookup you also see here is a single IE1394 or Firewire connection. On the rear panel you have the following connections. A PS2 keyboard mouse combo port, USB 2.0 connectors, coaxial and optical SPDIF output ports, dual 1 gigabit LAN connections, USB 2.0 and eSATA ports and a multi-channel audio input and output connections. The form format of this motherboard is CEB which is a closer match to dual CPU server type motherboards. So if you intend to purchase this motherboard for your PC or next build, ensure to check that your case is compatible with this type of format. This motherboard does come with an over voltage option. Now in its default position as you see here, the maximum you can push through that CPU is 1.7 volt. 
moving that jumper to the alternate over voltage enabled position will give you a max cap of 1.9 volt so be prepared for some crazy overclocking with this motherboard. Alternatively it's the same thing for both the DRAM and the QPI bus. Moving these jumpers on the DRAM will take you from a default 1.9 to a crazy 2.46 volt and the QPI from 1.7 to 1.9 volt. And this is the best part of the motherboard, 7, that's right, you're not seeing things, 7 PCIe 2 slots. These are the slots we're interested in today though, these blue slots here operate a PCIe 2 on an X16 bandwidth. So let's mount up some graphics cards on this particular motherboard and see what kind of crazy configurations we can come up with. For all you hardcore PC gamers out there, you can insert one GTX 285 which is more than capable of maxing out many of the current top title games. However, if you want to increase your resolution and add anti-aliasing without sacrificing frame rates, be a maniac and add a second GTX 285 in SLI. Now, ask yourself, am I a mad psycho frames per second maniac who forms at the mouth of the very thought of crisis at 100 frames per second? You are? Well, here it is, the badass three-way SLI. For all you guys who are fed up with ragdoll physics and want some real physics in your gameplay so you can feel those bullets whizzing past your ears, see the flames coming towards you and get all the textures that you could ever possibly need to enlighten your gameplay, insert a 9800 GT in the fourth PCIe 2X16 slot to give you the best physics capabilities you could ever possibly dream of. This is going to be an absolute wicked motherboard. Can't wait to get this on the test bench, overclock it and see exactly what kind of results we can get coming off the supercomputer motherboard. The Asus P67WS supercomputer motherboard does indeed look like it's going to be a recipe for success and an absolute hit for all you extreme enthusiasts out there, parallel programmers and extreme gamers. So without a doubt, we're going to put this motherboard on the test rig, install the new uh, Core i7-975 CPU, slam in some three-way SLI, quad SLI, etc., and see exactly what results this motherboard can produce. So keep your eyes peeled for that video. It should be out in a few days after this one goes live. Once again, I wish to thank you guys for post comments and rate these videos, especially my subscribers. And don't forget, if you wish to stay up to date with the latest and greatest in gaming and PC hardware, feel free to subscribe.